Possum stew, possum stew, what's bloody good for you? Get your life and gear and a feed of possum stew. Well, you probably guessed by now, this week's clip is about making possum stew. Big shout out to subscriber Bushwhacker, who did all the editing on this. And that is the guts of doing videos. The camera works easy, but... And I've just looked at what he's done, and it's fantastic. So thank you very, very much. Big shout out to Bushwhacker. Anyway, folks, uh, sit back, enjoy this clip, making possum stew. Possum stew, possum stew. Oh, it's bloody good for you. Get your life and gear and a feed of possum stew. Well, uh, good morning. Off to a bit of a late start this morning. Morning, Bob. How you doing? Hey. So, uh, these uh, possums are uh, not actually the best, Nick. They didn't winter very well. Just going to have a look at them down the back of the truck and uh, decide what's going to be dog tucker and what's going to be human tucker. Oh, you on, Bob? You look a whole lot, wouldn't you? <laughs> Sit down, boo. Yeah. They just weren't, that one there's alright, but most of them just weren't really that fat. Well, that one's scrawny as, it's definitely dog tucker. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We had eight, and I took two out. Bloody Bruno has eaten one in the night. What's going on with you, Boo? Hey? You're going hunting in one hour, so chill out, mate. Yeah, going hunting soon. Yeah. It's okay. I'm a bit slow this morning because it's a late night, but we're going for a hunt, so don't get upset. You can hear that bob? Yeah, make no, sure you can't, it's got string on it. Don't want you chewing on that, take that string off. You have a play with that. Well, that's a bit fatter than the last one. Gonna bone those legs out. Now this is a male, and you can probably see the glands in here. I've just cut them out to show you. Um, get those out. You do not want to eat those. I can tell you right now. The first time I ate possum with the glands still in uh, was uh, when I was a kid. I was living under the Mottawaka Bridge, and I uh, oh, got my first possum, big buck. Cooked it up in the pot, left all that in, and by God, did it taste horrible. Pretty much the same as with most animals, but uh, these big sinews that run down here. You want to whip them out, because they're as tough as, and down the bottom leg, there's not much meat there, you can just about whack that off, because it's, it's a bit like a pukeko. The top's where all the meat is, but just strip them all out. There's our thigh muscle there, minus the bone. Let's pop that out. Right around it. Bob, you want a bone? Come here, Bob. Come here, Bob. Okay. And that is one boned out bit of thigh. So that's just two possums there. It's four back legs and the back stakes. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some milk. This is a very old method of tenderising wild game. 
It also draws the gamey flavour out a wee bit and makes it taste a little bit more palatable. Although, personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with the taste of possum. So I'm going to cover that with Glad Wrap, put it in the fridge overnight, and tomorrow, make it into possum stew. Just down here behind the dog kennels, there's lots of wild stuff growing. We've got uh, mint. But what I'm actually looking for is some fennel. There used to be some growing around here. And there it goes right there. I don't know if you can see that. And there's the there's the root I'm after, look at that. Right there. Heaps of eggs. Thanks mate. Awesome, appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well there's all my ingredients for my possum stew. And it is my possum stew, it's my own recipe. I've cooked it before but not with fennel. This is a, a new one to me to try it. Right, before I start uh, chopping up the ingredients, I will go through what I've got here. I've got some sweet and sour chilli sauce, some olive oil, a cheap red wine, some capsicums, or if you're in the States, you'll call them bell peppers, and they are fire roasted. Got one stick of celery, don't want to use too much of that because it's quite a powerful taste in stews. Kumara, uh, that's what us New Zealanders um, know as sweet potato, or you will overseas, but these, we call them kumara, that's the Maori name. Uh, four onions, I've got some leaf lard, that comes from a pig, the best fat you can use some garlic from the Catlins and we've got some smoked paprika, we've also got normal paprika some chicken stock and thyme and sage, if you can get it fresh better still, I don't have it fresh right now uh, some Himalayan pink salt, pepper, potatoes and carrots and there's my possum which has been overnight in the milk just marinating. Now the chicken stock um, you can also use beef stock depending on what your sort of flavour preferences, but I like chicken stock with possum. Right, I'll start chopping and we'll come back. When doing your onions, leave the ends on. Cuts this way, and then cuts this way. Rock it over, again the same again, and then same again. Now you can take your ends off. There they go. And it's good to go in for the shoot. I'm going to be putting in 10 cloves of garlic because we like garlic, but uh, just put as much in as you generally like yourself. If you're not a big garlic person, there may be two or three. I'm taking the skins off the garlic, make sure your garlic's up that way easier. You're crushing it and the skin comes off at the same time, done. Again, up that way, so it's like a wee rocker. Done. Done. Very quick. Done. Done. How quick is that? Doing garlic. So we're just going to finally chop these guys. Now I haven't cooked much with fennel. Flavour. Mmm, pretty carroty. Fennel will go in with the garlic. And we'll saute that later with the onions.
potatoes, not too small. Otherwise, they're just going to mush. The smaller you cut a vegetable, the more it breaks down. Nice sweet kumara. Again, not too small. Wanted some nice whitey bits. We're going to drain this into here. And that leftover milk is going to go to a wild cat that's been hanging around the farm. Now normally I get rid of them, but uh, this particular cat has killed every mouse and every rat. And we normally have a real problem with them around here, so uh, it gets to live. It starts killing the native birds, it'll go, but uh, so far it just hammered the rat population. Going to leave it for a while to dry off. The cat will enjoy that, it's got a nice mix of milk and a bit of possum blood. Can let that dry for a while and come back to it and uh, get cooking. Right, I'm outside on my old recycled barbecue and I've just put some leaf lard in the pan. I'm just testing to make sure it's hot enough, not quite yet. You want your possum to go otherwise it's absorbing your oil and that's not what we want. That wouldn't be good. So it still needs to heat up before I put my meat in there. It's starting to sizzle now so I can throw my meat in. Well, I'm browning this off, my lovely daughter's just turned up and she's got a witch's potion. A witch's potion, what is it? Um, it's kabucha, which is um... Kabucha? Kabucha. Okay. Mm. Um, it's like a type of mushroomy thing that you like grow in the water, it's like a culture. Okay. It was only six dollars. Cool. We oh. went to like a health markety thing. Right. Yeah. Okay folks, what we're going to do is uh, whack a little bit of red wine in. Not too much. Little bit of sweet loop. It's gonna, it's gonna absorb that and burn the alcohol off it. And I'm gonna brown a few vegetables. I've got my skillet really hot and I've got some leaf lard in there. Onion in. I'm gonna saute that. Fresh garlic and fennel root in. Some of the juice from the red wine and cooking from our possum that we've browned. Give it a good stir. Make sure you give the bottom of the pan a good nudge, a stick, and all the flavour. So I've got my brown possum just sitting in the bottom of this camp oven here. A very low heat. I'm going to whack my onion straight on top of it now and then brown the veggies and put them on top of that. Stir it in. Okay, I'm about six minutes into cooking now and I'm just adding my chicken stock. Gonna heat that up and then whack veggies in. The leaf lard's hot in the skillet. Carrots on top. We're doing our hard vegetables first. To go our meat. Carrots being the hardest. Then potatoes and kumara. Celery in. It's about 11 minutes into the cooking now and carrots are nice and brown so they can go into the pot. Stir in. Potatoes browning up nicely, just going to put a bit of paprika in there. If you're measuring it out, it would be about half a teaspoon. Some thyme. Now, if I had some rosemary, I'd be putting that in too, but I just don't have any. Some Himalayan pink salt to taste, and I'll check that later on. I'm not putting as much in as I think I need, but you can always add more, but you can't take it out and put too much, so I'll try that up later on. Brown pepper. Stir all your herbs in well. Oh, it's starting to smell good. Mm -hmm. Right, these are brown, they can go in.
Just lift it by arm. The stew. Come around the skillet. Stew's looking good. Right, so sweet and sour sauce. Quite liberal. Now you can also put tomato sauce if you want to, and you can also add tomato puree. And with this recipe, you can also put tomatoes in. I'm not, but I can tell you those things work just as well. If you're catching your possum in the winter time, and they're lean like my ones are, just add a wee bit of olive oil. With your smoked paprika, just be careful. It's good stuff, but it can be overpowering too. Well, it's going to be enough, I'd say. Stirring. Coming up good. With a shoot. Right, I'm going to turn the flame down a bit. As low as I can go on my barbecue. Three fire roasted capsicums. And uh, give them a quick cut with a knife while they're in the stew. They're soft so they can break up easy. Here we go. Done. Right, I'm going to turn the flame down a bit. As low as I can go on my barbecue. I'm going to leave the simmering, whack the lid on, and come back and check it in an hour. We're going to give it about three hours though. It's time for eating. I don't know how much you can see in the dark here. Just getting our last bit of light of the day. I've been testing it a couple of times and I can tell you guys it's bloody good. Get one last stir. Take it out to the caravan, feed the kids. They'll be hungry too. Let's have a little taste. Oh, it's good. Mm. We're out eating the caravan because it's a bit of fun. We're kind of pretending we're camping. This makes life a bit more interesting. Oh, look at these candles, awesome. Officially, this is your first time eating possum. Okay, bring your bowl close, honey. I don't know how I feel about possum. The idea of the possum. Thanks. You don't like the idea of the possum? Talk to your bowl a bit there, son. Because they're like so creepy, crawly, and bad for the environment. Yeah, they're not really, yeah, they're bad for the environment, they're not creepy, they crawly. Get, they get all the poison to kill them, and it's like. Yeah, but none of these, these are off private land, you go, son. Thanks. Tear into it, kids. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm scared. It kind of just tastes like, a, like normal meat. Normal meat? Just like every other meat. Okay. That's strange, because it's a possum. <laughs> <laughs> Son, have you had a bit of meat yet? No. No? Try some so I can get your reaction. It kind of feels like you're eating chicken. Mm. The texture. It is, eh? Nice. Mm. You should go possum in. Mm. It's good. I want to go possum in, Dad. It's good. Yeah. It tastes delicious. Okay, honest ratings, kids. Honest ratings. Dayla, honest rating on this food. That flavour, what would you give for flavour? Are we talking about like the whole thing in general? No, like we'll give different, we'll do sections, we'll do for tender, for flavour, and would you eat it again, okay? First of all, out of 10, for flavour, what would you give it? Like, 8.5, except that's because, the only reason is because, for me personally, mm -hmm. when if the whole food is exactly the same flavour, even if it's a really, really good flavour, I kind of get bored if it all tastes exactly the same. Mm -hmm, because fair you enough. just have the whole flavour. Okay. But like, it's a really good flavour, but mm -hmm. I'm one of those kind of people who likes my food, like, not always all together in one thing. Like, so you can take separate things and have different flavours to like... Yep, I hear what you're saying, but you could have just said 8.5, but I hear what you're saying. That's a good, <laughs> good reason. Alright. So, that's what stews are. They're all cooked together. Yeah. Um, like, for tender, meat. Well, it's obvious, but extremely tender, so. From 10. 1 to 10? Um, I don't know, like, well, it's perfect for me, this tenderness, so I give 10. Okay, 10. And would you eat it again? Yeah. 
-hmm. Yes. Okay, so. Um, flavour? Seven. Mm hmm. That's a bit much flavour. Quite strong. It's really strong, yeah. Strong, yeah. I put a lot of spice in there, okay. Um, and you don't like stuff real strong, do you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, tenders, like nine. A nine for tender? Okay. And I would eat it again. Eat it again. Mm -hmm. But less spices for you next time. Okay, yeah. that's fair enough. Okay, flavour <laughs> I give this an eight. Tenderness, definitely a ten. Would I eat it again? Hell yes. If you're a Kiwi, and you live in New Zealand, then you've got to try this one time. There's some great abundance out there. You can shoot them, trap them, snare them. Any way you like, but uh, give it a crack. You'll like it if you cook like this. In the meantime, uh, good luck with your own outdoor cooking and your own hunting, gathering food. You can't be good. Be careful. Thanks, son. <laughs> Love you, son. It's okay. Love you, honey. <laughs> Do you hear that? No, I don't. This is what you get with teenage girls, eh? These moody things. Never get that with boys, just the girls. Possum stew, possum stew. Oh, it's bloody good for you. Get your life and gear and a feed of possum stew. Mm -hmm. It's good. It tastes delicious.